as well. So thank you for that. So we are wrapping up this month's series, Bountiful Living. Yes, I'm just going to put this right here. I got it. And today's topic, decolonizing wealth enough for all. So some of you may be saying, what does that mean? So first we have to talk about what is colonization. So stay with me. We're going somewhere this morning. Colonization uh, is this idea, this practice of occupying land by force and then also forcing those indigenous folks to assimilate to the new culture. And this culture takes over the mind, the body, the spirit of the colonized people. It is motivated by a scarcity mindset and often driven by, I would call a very false perception that this taking over of culture is somehow God ordained. It is divine, uh, divide, not divine, be clear. It is a divide and conquer, command and control and exploit mindset. And it's rampant in our world and our culture. In fact, as a human race, we have never experienced a time in our world where colonization isn't happening or currently happening. Uh, and it's often fueled by unconscious capitalism. So to decolonize, the literal definition would mean the returning of land and resources. And what I want to talk about today is more of a healing in the mindset, a healing of the trauma within all of us, because whether we come from the culture that is the one oppressing or the oppressed, there is an, an effect, a trauma that lives within all of us as a result of this practice. And I want to look at decolonizing wealth from this context of healing and transforming the relationship with money and wealth and our financial systems that fuel this scarcity mindset that fuel this idea of colonization. And what we know as a spiritual truth is that the universe is infinite and the very nature of the universe is pure abundance. So how can we truly internalize this and, you know, Y'all, this is, I'm not, this is a deep thing, right? I'm, I'm going to highlight some things because it's way more complex than a 20, 25-minute talk here. But I just want to, you know, open, open our minds to start to be the ones in this room to say yes to decolonizing our own consciousness in all areas of our life. So if you're looking for more resources on this, I do want to highlight the website, and you can put it in the chat, decolonizingwealth.com. So, uh, you know, First Nations people, indigenous people, they look at the land as a means of wealth, or not as a means of wealth, excuse me, but as our mother, right? Something to respect, something to take responsibility for and to protect, as opposed to a resource to exploit. And we can learn a lot from these practices on... Uh, educating ourselves on the value of the wholeness of the ecosystem, how we can begin to treat the land not as a mean for profit, but as a means for growth and learning. And as an example, nature is an example of pure abundance. And taking good stewardship of the land, volunteering our time, picking up trash, planting seeds, donating money to organizations that do this work. Educate and promote land stewardship in our daily lives. One of the ways uh, that we are doing that here is through our garden, beginning to shift to native plants and 
creating a pollinating pollinator garden uh, as our memory garden to bring in the bees and the butterflies and all those things, being a good steward of our land. Um, and I just want to take this moment now, inspiration, to um, say thank you to KP Gales Garden Club. They have given us a small grant to continue this process and begin to add more native plants and beautify the front of our building as well as the side. So thank you for that. And thank you, Colleen, for <laughs> submitting for that grant. Yes. So folks are seeing what we're doing here, right? So how do we begin to shift then from this kind of Western colonized perspective of a wealth driven by lack and scarcity to a more natural worldview that is in alignment with the natural laws of the universe? So we can look at what these laws are. What are these universal laws, spiritual principles, natural laws of the universe? And then decide to be more conscious in our alignment with those laws in order to allow the abundance of the universe to flow freely for all. Because the truth is we live in an abundant universe that provides everything it needs to sustain itself. Nature, abundant nature, it's the natural state of things. And therefore it must be true for us because we too are nature. And we are always at choice. We have free will as humans to make choices and to acknowledge and take responsibility that our choices make an impact on not only our own lives, but our community and our planet and our world and everyone around us, everything around us. Our thoughts, our words, our actions create this ripple effect that make an impact on the collective. And unfortunately, we see a lot of evidence of how humans tend to lean towards greed based on the lie of scarcity and fear that there's not enough for all. And therefore, I have to get mine. I have to hoard, right? And to hang on to and accumulate massive amounts of resources because it might not be enough someday. So we want to shift and be conscious to know when we know that there is enough for all, we can open our hearts to share and to trust in this flow of abundance. And it kind of takes all of us working on the same, with the same agreements, right? And unfortunately, we live in a world with systems that do not play by those same rules, but it doesn't mean we cannot begin to shift and begin to question those and take a stand for what we know to be true. Each of us has our own worldview, right? Our primary set of beliefs about the universe, about life, about who we are and our place in the world, why life is the way it is. And every aspect of our life then reflects that belief. And so our relationship with money, with finances, also is on the spectrum of belief, ranging from scarcity to that of the divine reality of wholeness and abundance and sufficiency. And we can move along this spectrum many times, even throughout a day, right? Something comes up and we're like, oh, that's... But when we begin to notice... We can catch ourselves when we are feeling the constriction, feeling the fear, what it feels like in our body. When we are caught in the lie of scarcity and separation and not enoughness, we can pretend, we can pretend, we can pay attention. So sometimes you can just pretend and then shift your energy, right? <laughs> Fake it till you make it. It's, yeah, it is a theater. So we can notice and pay attention. That's always the first step. I say this so many times. The first step in any kind of healing or transformation is first to see what is, to pay attention, to not sleepwalk through our day, and to be aware, so self-aware of even those subtle places, the constriction, the tightening of the belly, ugh, in the heart, whatever it may be, when this scarcity mindset comes up. Maybe it's a thought. Notice it. Pay attention. And then begin to question it, to challenge it, and to begin to move out of scare city. 
Nobody wants to live in scarcity. Where are you living? Do you need a new zip code? <laughs> so when you live in scarcity, you're in the constant state of anxiety, fear that there's not enough. And from this perspective, it leads us to withhold and to hoard and to constrict. Not only our money, but our energy, our time, our talents, our creativity, our love. So living in scarcity, in the mindset of scarcity, does not equal the amount of money in your savings account. Someone can have masses amount of money and have the mindset of scarcity and still move through the world from fear. And someone can have zero dollars in their savings but move through the world from the mindset of sufficiency and every step of the way, every moment, their needs are still provided. Money is just one of the tools. It's the current system that our society has said yes to right now, uh, but it's energy in its flow, and we can allow ourselves not to get caught in the trap of believing that money is our source or that money itself is the thing. And, you know, for me at least, it's so much easier now that we rarely see paper money because what, you know, moving money, it's, it's invisible because it's not even real. We press a button and we do things and it like moves around as numbers in some cloud, right? How could that invisible transaction equate your worth, you know? So the belief in scarcity that there are limited resources and not enough for everyone is the root of so much conflict in our world, in our lives. You know, it, it causes tension. It causes everything from divorce to war. And the truth is, <laughs> living in scarcity is a false reality. It's a lie that we've collectively bought into as a society. So it's time that we break free from this false reality by taking our power back and affirming the truth of the infinite nature of the universe and holding this such that the evolution of consciousness can rise so that our world at large can reflect that truth. Right now we are seeing the reflection of the collective consciousness at play. We see the world, the structures of the world that are an outpicturing of the mass, the majority of humans and the whole world. And right now it's very much that of scarcity and lack and greed and not enough but it's simply not true and we are the ones in the room that can rise above to create that tipping point so we work in consciousness in our beliefs in our ideas in our mindset in our own lives and we listen for what is ours to do in the world of form to create those shifts in the outpicturing of the world but it starts here first here here here. Karen Russo uh, is a wonderful Center for Spiritual Living colleague of mine, and she wrote the book, The Money Keys. We studied that last year. And she said, when you act from scarcity, you serve the idea of lack. You're or you organize your decisions and choices in a way to maximize your good while someone else goes without. Someone who is fearful may be able to generate money, but no amount of money will ever really address the challenge of scarcity. Fear is a faith issue, not a financial one. So our work is one rooted in faith. How can we transcend the consciousness of lack and limitation and not enoughness through our own faith and belief in the universe that is pure abundance and that is always here for us, working through us to create the world that works for all. We must serve the reality of wholeness and oneness, not a false reality of lack. 
and me and mine mentality. So the universal principle of the law of unity states that all life is connected and to create from, we create from this one infinite eternal source. Practicing affirming this truth in the one infinite source that we live, move, and have our being in, this one life energy, the source as the source and substance of all our supply, we can move into the realization that that too includes us and all. As Dr. Ernest Holmes says, I cannot be deprived of my supply. The trees do not lack for leaves, nor do the flowers fail to bloom. Am I not as important as they? That idea sticks with me every time I see the beauty fall right now, right? The leaves are so vibrant. The blossoming in spring, every time I see and I recognize the beauty in nature, I reflect this idea back to myself. Am I not as important as they? And am I somehow getting in my way? Because the flowers do not say, mm, am I worthy? Should I let myself be seen in my fullness? Or does somebody need to tell me it's okay for us to bloom? right? This is ours to do, to be, to become all that we are here to do, to be, and to become, and to express this infinite source of life in all areas of our lives. We live in an infinite universe of pure potentiality. There is more than enough for all because it's not pie. We don't have to slice it up and make sure everyone gets the, their part because it's infinite and it's exponential. <laughs> the thought that just came to mind, I'll just say it. Sometimes I say things and I'm like, but it's like, it's like our, um, uh, the United States budget or whatever, they just make it up, they just make more money, you know? It's like, it's infinite, it's like, whatever it is. Oh, we'll just make more, now there's more, I don't know. So, <laughs> <I'm>, uh, uh, <laughs> it's all just made up, y'all. We're making it up. So we are making up our experience of life right here, right now, in the one. And so we could choose. We get to choose. We are always at choose, uh, choice to break free from those lies that have locked us into, you know, playing in, within certain games or systems that are structured, man-made, human-made constructs. Let's break free of all of that and allow the infinite source of nature to birth something new that reflects our new state of awareness of the consciousness that we are moving into right now. Hoarding for fear that there will never be enough will only perpetuate fear in this state of scarcity and lack. And when I'm saying hoarding, I'm not saying don't save, right? It's very wise. Like my parents taught me when I was young and we teach our daughter now, save some, spend some, give some. But there's a difference between saving and accumulating massive amounts of things and money beyond the reasonable ability to ever use them in this lifetime, especially when others are without. So this is where I'm, I'm feeling the vibration. I'm seeing it on TikTok, y'all. You can see that this younger generation is paying attention. They're like, why are we doing this? Why? What? This doesn't make sense. And are questioning things that previous generations were told we couldn't even talk about, no less question, and not talking about it only serves those who are in power and have. Talking about it allows something new to be birthed. Where was I? So this is where we are evolving as a collective in order to create this world that works for all, which is the vision of Centers for Spiritual Living, our larger organization. And a few weeks ago, I spoke more about what does this really mean, though, a world that works for everyone? Well, how does it work for this person? How can it work for, you know, does, it, does a world that work for everyone include terrorists? And my thought was, things such as oppression and greed cannot 
coexist within this new vision of a world that works with everyone. So we're not saying a world that every, works for everyone, including the terrorists. We're saying a world that works for everyone will not even be possible for the terrorist mindset to exist within it. We're moving beyond that. We can't look at what is now and say, well, how do we do that? We have to create a whole new vision for our world and our planet. In our Declaration of Principles, Dr. Ernest Holmes says, we believe the ultimate goal of life to be complete freedom from all discord in every nature, and that this goal is sure to be attained by all. So this is one of our guiding principles. Freedom for all, for all. So how do we work towards this, this world and this vision within our hearts, within our own community, within the world? We start by affirming wholeness knowing that all things are working together for good, and then we get out of our own way and we begin to let the flow of life move through us as creativity, as love, as the pure abundance and joy and freedom and peace that we are here to be. We must wake up and choose each day to no longer reside in scare city, but to move into the place of oneness and wholeness and enoughness in our own hearts and mind each morning as a conscious choice, understanding the unity of all life and respecting all life as worthy and whole. And as we began this month with, we said, you know, <clears throat> prosperity isn't just about money. We're going to be talking about money, but it's really about experiencing freedom in all areas of our life. So how can we begin to live this truth knowing our worth, knowing we are whole, knowing we are enough in our relationships, in our career, in our health? We live in a field of infinite potential. And it's impossible to outgive infinite, right? Because it's infinite. So as we share and we get into this flow of reciprocity of giving and receiving, which we talked about two weeks ago, that is how we can consciously participate in this practice of reciprocity and getting in right relationship with giving and receiving so that we're not out of balance in one area or the other, but finding that perfect flow for each of us where things begin to move with ease and when we feel resistance, when we feel things beginning to constrict and to stifle, we do not let that dictate the reality of our situation. Instead, we turn within and we ask spirit life, what is seeking to be known here, right? This is a demonstration of something that is wanting to be shifted and transformed for something new to awaken, a new way of being that will then activate that ease and that flow that we all desire. So we give from a conscious place, knowing that there is enough for all, implementing generosity and sufficiency, caring for ourselves and each other, really as compassion and caring and kindness as a core value, right? Letting that lead the way. And what could that look like practically in this community? Well, I want to thank, again, another community member. Uh, she's online today. But Rachel Beal and I have been having conversations around what would it look like to create some sort of like mutual aid way to present an ask, a request, or make an offer, or what we have something to give in this community. Because we have so much to give, and we all go through moments of needing a certain resource or thing. So how can we come together? And we explored some different you know, apps and different things, and we realized that we kind of went back to, to square one and that the easiest thing to, way to um, implement this to start is through our Facebook community group, and there is a chat feature through Messenger. So even if you're not on Facebook, you can do the chat. And if you're not on Facebook, we're going to set up some other ways where you can email in a request or ask, and, you know, we'll, we'll be... In, uh, integrating this and implementing this soon, but I just wanted you all to know that that's a seed that has been planted of how we can support each other better in this community. So, 
and I just want to say we're going to be talking about this in our class later after the potluck, it also takes the vulnerability to be willing to ask when we need support and help, right? I can see we start this and everyone is, I can offer, I can offer, I can offer. And we are community and we love and support each other. So it is safe to let your needs be known so we can support you. So as we wrap up this series on bountiful living, I invite you to notice how perhaps the lie of scarcity is showing up in your life and in the world all around us. To start paying attention, noticing the messages that we see in the world, reflected in especially marketing. Notice it and then just say in your mind, oh, that's that. And that's not true. Just notice it. Don't let it filter your consciousness. Notice it. Ah, right? And then challenge and reject the narrative of scarcity and lack. And from that place of awareness, use our spiritual practices of meditation, of visioning, of affirmation to shift and to expand our awareness to the truth of the infinite abundant nature of life, to be in that flow of prosperity in all areas of our life, knowing there is enough for all. And we know that there is enough, we will see that there is enough. And we start with the only place that we can, which is within ourselves, to know this truth and then allow this vibration of abundance to ripple out and to make a great impact on this planet, on this world, and in the universe, the cosmos at large, yes? So who's with me? You ready to pack your suitcase? We're moving out of scarcity. All right, let's take this into prayer. Ah, take a deep breath. Ooh, yes. So grateful, so grateful to recognize the one life that is the pure abundance of all. This one source energy that is back of all things, living, moving, and having its very being through us. So I know and affirm this day the abundant nature of the universe is who I am that I am showing up as an expression of this good. And I am a living demonstration of the flow of life energy, the exponential possibility, infinite nature of life is expressing through me. And I clear the way and let it be. So I know and affirm that this is true for myself, for each and every one of us, for all beings, all sentient beings on this planet, to have what they need and desire. For truly there is enough. And I allow this word to permeate the entire collective field, calling into this field of prayer and abundance, all leaders, all world leaders, all financial leaders, all people in positions of leadership and power to awaken now to the truth of abundance and the good and the value and to see the worth of every sentient being as whole, perfect, and holy and from there lead the way lead the way mm. so I'm so grateful to speak this word so grateful for the fulfillment of this prayer as I release it into the action of the law that always says yes and together we say and so it is yes it is happening